Hey everybody, it is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, making another video for you out of Boise, Idaho. We're working on a 2005-2006 Chrysler 300. What's most important about this Chrysler is that it has their 2.7 liter engine. Um, if you follow my YouTube channel, you'll see that I've done a lot of extensive work to these engines not this one in general but uh, or not this one in particular but these engines in general the Chrysler 2.7 I'm familiar with uh, I've rebuilt them replaced cylinder heads on them timing all the gears all that other great stuff this one came to me with the complaint of a misfire now the history behind it is that it ran just fine it did have a constant check engine light on due to an O2 sensor and that's something that I'm going to address as well but one day, um, basically out of the blue, the engine started running rough, cars vibrating, and the owner noticed that the check engine light was flashing off and on, off and on, off and on. And so, um, obviously to me, that tells me that there's going to be a specific code, a specific misfire. The customer took it to AutoZone, had the code pulled for a cylinder number six misfire. So I really didn't have to do much as far as the diagnostics when it comes to the computer. I put my computer on it, pulled the same cylinder number six misfire code, but I had already kind of suspected that the coil was bad. However, just to kind of show you how this all works out, let's go ahead and get this car started here. Okay. Whew, it's hot, 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 hot in here. Okay, so we have the car started, and of course there's a check engine light on, so we'll plug our computer in, and we'll, and obviously with this one we'll get a P0306, with it, which is a specific cylinder misfire. And, now, and what it's telling us is that cylinder number six is misfiring currently right now. And you can tell it is, engine running rough, doesn't sound too good. Now on this engine, cylinder number six is going to be the cylinder all the way in the back on the driver's side closest to the firewall back here. So it's going to be this one. Now you need three things to have a cylinder fire. You need three things to make an engine run or also in other terms you need three things to achieve internal combustion and that's spark which is fire, that's fuel which is gas, and that's oxygen which is your air your throttle and so right now one of those three things or all of those three things or two out of one of, the, uh, of those three things is not working and we're going to get to the bottom of it so the first thing that we want to do the first thing we want to check and the easiest thing to check is going to be the coil now one of the easiest ways to do that is to go ahead and pull the coil plug off and unplug it and see if there's any change in the engine And notice when I pull that plug off that there's no change in the engine. Now let's put the plug back on. Still no change, okay? Pull the plug off, no change. Let's go to another cylinder that we suspect is working well and see what happens. Did you hear the change? go down in here see if you can hear it okay so that slight change in the engine <coughs> when I pull the plug off of another coil that that tells me that this coil is working just fine now if I go over here Again, and I pull coil number six. No change. So that really begins to make me wonder if that coil is firing correctly. And I suspect that it is not. So let's go ahead and set up for another test. Since we highly suspect that that coil is not firing right, we'll go ahead and we will remove our breather tube here. Air tube whatever you want to call it. I'm going to leave it plugged in though and just set it to the side. And we've got our two coils here. Now I'm going to pull two of them. 
can pull this one and this one. Uh, on the Chrysler 2.7, you're going to want a T30 Torx bit. Trying to get the camera set up so you guys can see here. I'm pulling my coil. I'm going to set it there. I'm pull this coil. I'm going to set it there. Okay. I'm going to show you a trick. Now, this is going to be your backyard trick, all right? It's going to be for all you do-it-yourselfers that don't have a bunch of fancy equipment. I'm going to do this to show you that it's okay to do. We're going to plug our coils back in, and then I'm going to pull my spark plugs, and we're going to set everything up so we can visually inspect for a few seconds and see if there's any spark coming through here. All right, I'm gonna pause my camera here for just a second. All right, and as I'm getting set up for my visual spark test, I'm also being observant. Now the customer had changed this spark plug, they told me, and I don't know if this camera is gonna do it any justice, but you can see in here, you, you wanna look at the color here, and on this one, there's a little bit of brown, right? underneath the tip right here you see me going over it that's a little bit of real fresh oil and there's kind of a glare on here glossy glare that's because that's wet fuel which means the fuel's not burning out of here which is another indicator that this spark plug another visual indicator that this spark plug is not firing correctly now this is an older spark plug you can tell it's firing and it's firing up pretty clean because it came out nice and dry and it's evenly uh, wore out and all that other good stuff. So I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to show you what a visual spark test is going to look like. And that, yes, if you're a backyard do-it-yourselfer, this is totally okay. Okay, folks. So I'm going to have somebody start the car. And I'm only going to be able to do this once. And what I want you to look at is the spark plug on the left and the spark plug on the right. And what you're looking for is for spark and no spark. And when I say to turn it off, just go ahead and turn it off. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Now, I actually don't think you could see that on the camera because I couldn't see it on my end. But you could clearly see that, again, in the visual inspection, that this spark plug was sparking. This spark plug was not. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and pause it. I'm going to go ahead and get this coil completely removed and show you one last bit of evidence. Okay, folks, so we have three different coils here. We have the one that is an original coil that we know is working. This is the one that we compared the one that is not working to. We have the one that is not working, all right? And then we have a brand new one. To replace it with now let's see if we can take a look at the one that is not working let's get in the sunlight here see if I can get you better light let's see I'm not real sure I can't really see that on my end too well let's go over here okay if you can see I want to show you. You see all that gray where my finger is? Okay, that is actually visual proof that this coil is bad. Now, right about here, you see where the color changes at the tip of my finger? That's where this coil is cracked, and all of that gray, those gray lines, that's where the spark has been escaping and arcing across the outside of this coil. So that, so all of this, all together, again, you see that right there? Those funky gray lines. So all of that, all of this 
visual and computer data, all of this all together tells us that it is time to replace number six specific because that is what we have. We don't have a random misfire code. We have a specific number six misfire code. And so it is time to replace this coil. That is what we are going to do. And since I only have one hand here when I'm holding the camera, I'm going to pause it and get everything reset so I can go ahead and start this car and we'll see if we fixed it or not. Okay, everybody, now that I got everything back together, I've got my new coil on installed on the cylinder number six. Got my breather back on and tightened up. The last thing I'm going to do after I've started it and I've taken it for just a minor test drive is clear the code for a few reasons on this particular job i've got another code in there for an o2 sensor and i'm not quite ready to fix that o2 sensor yet so once i get that part in i'm going to want that code in there just to go ahead and uh, read it and just be sure and all that other good stuff uh the other reason is because i want to see how this engine is going to run real quick before i do anything else and remember i'm doing all visual right now so here we go let's get it started Oh, wow. I can tell you right now, already the vibration is gone, so we're in good shape there. We've got a beautifully smooth running engine. There you go. So here's what I'm going to do. This engine has all kinds of relearning procedures, blah, 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 blah. It's been running with a misfire for just a little bit now. So now that it's got a good coil and we've got a good smooth running engine again, I'm going to go ahead and let it idle for a little bit, let the computer relearn everything it needs to relearn, and then I'm going to put, uh, take it for a test drive. Then I'm going to go ahead and fix the O2 sensor, clear the code out, and this vehicle will be ready to go. All right, everybody. Well, that's how you diagnose and change a specific cylinder engine misfire that ends up leading to a coil on a Chrysler 2.7 liter engine V6. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. Please like, subscribe, and share the knowledge. Thanks for hanging out with me. I am signing off.